in this league. And oh, by the way, each have three assistants that are former players or graduates of, West, of Western and Wofford. Very much a keep it in the program mentality. They split the regular season series. Wofford has dominated the series recently, but it's Western Carolina that won the last meeting, and they did it in a very low-scoring game in Cullowee. Wofford starts in man-to-man, -man, and that's primarily what we'll see out of the Terriers all night long. C.J. Newman with the early statement. And here's the junior guard out of Colorado, Eric Garcia. Spencer Collins with a bit of a ball fake. It sent the freshman Goslin flying by, and it's Goslin who secures the miss. These teams know each other very, very well, but when you get into tournament play, first, you know, until that first media timeout, many times there's just a feeling out process. Here's Devin Peterson, the sophomore who really was instrumental down the stretch when she came into the starting lineup. They haven't been able to get it to the inside. Now they do to Brummett. Three on the shot clock. Double team comes. Brummett rolls it off. Both teams can run when the opportunity presents itself, but they're best in the half court. Each run sets with laser precision. Peterson deflects the pass. Garcia touches it last. A nice job by Peterson right there. Picked his spot in order to tip that ball away. Then he just kind of said, you know what, I'm going to tip it quicker than you, and it went off Garcia. Year in and year out, the Catamounts are around the top of the Southern Conference in terms of steals. They are again this year. In fact, they're 20th nationally in steals per game. You're right. They are always right there, something that Larry Hunter and staff always work on. Peterson fading away, bricks one down. Gordon's got his second rebound. I'm sure that's the shot that Larry Hunter would want out of Peterson or any of the Catamounts. First touch of the game for Fletcher McGee. Here he goes again, guarded by Brown. The senior leader on the freshman. That'll be a fun one to watch. And Gordon turns it over, traveling with it. With both teams so solid in the half court defensively, man to man, you understand why that first game was a, was a grinder, you know, in the in the 50s and, and high 40s. Shots are hard to come by. Western Carolina began the year winless in 13 games on the road. Then they won three of their last four away from Cullowee as Mike Brown uncorks the score. Able to free himself. They put Spencer Collins on him is because he's one of the better def perimeter defenders and he's got size, but Brown was able to free himself there just enough to get the shot off. Fourth seed Terriers, the perennial power in the Southern Conference, but they enter this tournament off back-to-back -back losses. It's the first time in ages they come in with a two-game skid. Gordon turned it over on the last trip. Mike Brown down to the floor. Gordon tries to win it back. It's Goslin down there. And we got a jump ball. We'll stay on this end of the floor. And interestingly, there was a change in shot clock. There was a reset. They must have determined that Mike Brown came up with it enough. I thought that, so. Yep, that when he was on the floor. So that was that's advantage Western Carolina. I wonder if that's what the discussion is about right now. The officiating crew, a good one. Veterans Rick Hartzell, Brent Hampton, and Frankie Bordeaux had a brief conversation. Shot clock remains at 30. Garcia behind his head to Justin Gordon. Three catamounts converge for the rebound. Exactly right, one and done, three, and where was C.J. Newman and others for the Wofford Terriers? Offensive foul, they got Justin Browning hooking Fletcher McGee. That's the best defender on the floor in terms of his activity, in terms of his ability to affect balls. So an early foul on Browning. First shot for Fletcher McGee, Torian Brummett comes down with the rebound. 
He averaged a double-double two weeks ago. He was the player of the week two weeks ago here in the Southern Conference. Peterson drags his foot. They'll get him on the baseline instead. Here comes Rhett Harrelson off the bench for Western Carolina. Catamounts treat Harrelson like a sixth starter, if you will. He's been around this program four years. Has gotten better and better. And he has started a fair amount, but you know, you mentioned at the top, had some knee, had a knee injury. He's now become the sixth man and embraced that role here late in the season. He's caught fire late in the season. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the country. We have a lot of those on the floor today. McGee, he's one of them, but he went baseline. That's a really good matchup, Garcia and Harrelson. Kind of two like players, both outstanding shooters and tough as they come in this league. Five seconds on the shot clock. It's Garcia for three. He's able to get that ball above his shoulders before Harrelson got there to defend him. As a coach, it's just so much fun to watch both these teams execute offensively and defensively, just so sound at both ends. Defense has certainly won out here in the first five minutes of this game. Goslin knocks it into the Catamount bench. The Terriers will keep the possession. Combined, the teams are two for nine. It took the Terriers ages to get on the board, but they do. With Eric Garcia, the third best three-point shooter in the country at 43%. Wofford has ended Western Carolina's season four out of the last six years. Most of those right here on this floor in Asheville since the tournament has returned here. Garcia is a junior, he's been a part of that. Spencer Collins, the senior. Both of these staffs, not only a long tenured head coach, but on the bench, the assistants for the majority have been with Larry Hunter, been with Mike Young for a long time. All in the family, and, and you're right. I mean, these are, those are good assistants. There are several future head coaches on both these stabs. Red Harrelson able to stay with Garcia, who rolls one down to Sawville. Sawville, the transfer with his first touch. And we got a foul uh, against C.J. Newman, climbing the back of Torin Brunner. Newman has been fantastic in league play. Got tagged with a foul right there with Brummett getting tangled up. But boy, has he been a rebounding machine for the Terriers. Four of the five starters out there for Western Carolina. The lone non-starter, Red Harrelson, has been throughout his career. Good pass from Brown, but Brummett couldn't handle it. And the Catamounts turn it over for the fourth time. Watch Brown just kind of split the defense right here between Sawville and Collins. Little dump down, just a little bit too low for the big fella to reach and get. Yeah, it was a good idea. I thought it bounced up higher. It's hard for Brumman to go down and pick one off his shin. 
Here's Garcia off the bounce. Garcia, who's more of a catch and shoot three guy. You know, just shots are so hard to come by right now. Just took an inadvertent elbow to the face from Brown, who lost it, controls it, and has Western on top. Wofford fans wanted a jump ball. That was the right no call. He lost the ball and just regathered and went straight up. Both of these teams travel very well to Asheville. They're both about an hour away from here. And the collective fan base is both waiting for something to happen, some run, some momentum swing, or an energizer to get into it. Fletcher McGee, how about that off-balance shot for the freshman? I'm gonna tell you, he'll take shots like that, and you think, no, 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 but boy, he knocks him down at a very high percentage, both inside and outside the three. Wofford went down to Orlando, Florida to pick him up. He is fun to watch. The double team comes on Browning. Western all bunched up here at the top with six seconds on the shot clock. <laughs> here comes Eric Garcia. Wofford can be very patient offensively. Spencer Collins gets into the chest of Red Harrelson. It's an offensive foul on Collins. Harrelson was really crafty right there. You know, he let that play develop just a little bit, and then he stepped with the right to get ahead of Collins and took the charge. Collins doesn't usually make many mistakes at the offensive end, but got caught in a little bit of a trap right there. Wofford went to its bench. Larry Hunter for the Catamounts countered once Wofford made their moves. Brooks came in for the Terriers. So did Pegram and Jalen Allen, and Habubakar Matumbo with the ball ran off the bench for the Catamounts. Just nothing easy right now for the Catamounts. Harrelson gets his own miss. All tied up, here's Browning trying to get a step on the baseline. He missed it at the rim. He twisted his hand at the right at the wrong time. The ball just rolled off the rim. Gordon spins away from Justin Browning. Deloach just off the bench for Western. Almost traveled with it after pulling down the rebound. Well, whereas Wofford's doubling when the ball goes in the post, Western Carolina choosing to just play one-on-one. -on -one. That was Browning on Gordon, one-on-one. -on -one. That one off the foot, it was deflected, so Harrelson can pick it up and get it back to the front court. 10 to shoot, Brown. Travels. Three games so far in the Southern Conference Tournament, this being the fourth. The first three have been one possession games or one in the final minute. Early on, we have a one point game here in game number four.
About halfway through the first half, nine total points on the board. Teams are four of 17 combined with eight turnovers. It hasn't been pretty, and if anything, Dean, that's got to favor Western. The time they beat Wofford this year, it was 53-48, a defensive grinded out style anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, but look, Larry Hunter as well as Mike Young, both teams can would prefer to play a little faster pace. Both can play slower. To your point, I think right now it favors Western Carolina. Not quite as deep a bench either as the Terriers. Both teams got to cut down on the turnovers, though. That's really been some of it's a product of good defense. Some have been some unforced errors as well. Here's Jalen Allen. When he's on, he's great. But it's been pretty sporadic this year. He's wired to score. You're exactly right. But numbers down. Just watch Western. Not a lot of movement right now, at least player movement. Browning set the screen, drops one to Brummett. And it'll be Torian Brummett to the line. Really was kind of a clear out, if you will. They had Harrelson and Matumbo on the weak side. Kind of a three man game between Browning, Brown, and Brummett. Senior from Columbus, Georgia. So he really, he really got better for going against Twaski, Twaski King for two years. He, uh, he's battled some foul troubles this year, but nevertheless, I mean, those two battled, and then he was able to take over last year as a junior, and now this year as a senior with some outstanding numbers. Larry Hunter loves him more than anything on the defensive end of the floor. He thinks as long as Brummett is out there, he doesn't really have to worry about the other team's five. And he makes no bones. He's as good, a, as, as favorite a player as he's coached in many a years at Western. Red Harrelson sagged back on Derek Brooks. And both teams remain ice cold here in the mountains of North Carolina. Here's Brummett going against a freshman now. And he traveled with it. Five turnovers now. A piece. Walford chose to just let Pegram go one on one with, with Brummett. Just one on one, no, no help came. Held his ground, and that was certainly a travel with Brummett shuffling his feet. Wofford hasn't scored in more than three minutes here. Justin Gordon jukes one way, banks it home around Justin Brown. Well, when in doubt, kind of put it on the floor and put your head down. That's what Gordon did right there. There wasn't, wasn't a lot. He made something from nothing. Deep one here for Mike Brown. Hey, there's some offensive weapons on this Western Carolina team, but... It starts with Mike Brown. You said it earlier. Got to have an APB on Brown. It's not just one defender. And you've got to guard him collectively as a team. Brown got his hand in on that ball. And Brown, no, it'll be Browning who's whistled for the foul. That's a big call. So that, that, the three by Brown. Look how deep that was, though. I mean, he's a couple of steps behind. That's about a 25-foot shot. I think he caught the Wofford defense a little bit off guard. That whistle was on Browning, the best defensive player on the floor for Western Carolina, has two fouls with nine and a half to go in the first half. Yeah, that's a tough foul, because he is, to your point, he's their best defender, he's a utility guy. Mike Brown now with the rebound. making an emphasis to go into Torian Brummett. Now it's C.J. Newman who's in the game. Brown backs down Jalen Allen. Now Fletcher McGee will back it out. It just isn't easy for either team here. It's been a real grind. They're, they're just so solid defensively. Allen. 
for three. Jalen Allen out of Tennessee. Comes off the bench, can certainly give him a spark. Just his 24th of the year, though. You mentioned he's from, from Johnson City, Tennessee, not far from here, where ETSU is located. We went to high school at the Christ School here in Asheville. So back home of sorts. Abubakar Matumbo with Justin Gordon coming out at him. Now the teams are seeming to figure it out. We've got three threes here in the last minute or so. Sometimes that first game is always the most difficult in a tournament situation. Both of these teams were two of the six in the league that received a first round bye. So they didn't have to play yesterday. The winner of this game will get Chattanooga tomorrow. Jalen Allen, a try from this side. I told you, he is wired to score. Look, I mean, he's a guy that's played in almost 100, 96 career games, just 67 assists. I mean, he is thinking shot every time he catches. Yet he went through a pronounced drought earlier this year. He's got a team best six on back-to-back -back threes. Torian Brummett figures why not. Harrelson knocks it down off the floor. Devin Peterson wins it for Western. Justin Gordon just takes it off the glass. And throws it away. It took a while for the scoring to get on track. The threes are starting to fall. Jalen Allen connects for the Terriers. <laughs> you know there are students with too much time when there are big heads of the two of us being held up by the Western Carolina fans. But hey, we appreciate the love. <laughs> well, maybe that's why Wofford missed that last free throw. We are tossing around those, those big heads. As our wives say, we have faces for radio, so it's got to be distracting if you're looking through <laughs> plain glass at the free throw. Wofford's just 5 of 13 from the floor. Western Carolina, 4 out of 14. But the scoring has ticked up here a little bit with threes falling down for Allen, for Habubakar Matumbo. Mike Brown's got one for the Catamounts. Red Harrelson, who has unlimited range, has yet to try. Here's Brummett. Oh, quick feet for Brummett. He had a lane. Then he made it tougher on himself, and Matumbo puts home the tip. You're right. I hadn't seen that out of Brummett. Boy, he anchored that left pivot foot and was able to just wheel and deal. Jalen Allen's got the hot hand, so he's staying on the floor right now for the Terriers. They'll go inside to the freshman from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Pegram left Brummett standing there on the floor. The rebound comes to Sawville. 
Nice job. I think Sawville's as good a sixth man as there is in this league. He provides energy. He's a utility guy. He can play he can guard out on the perimeter. He's good in the post. Nice job right there. Terriers have now hit four of their last five shots. Mike Brown had a step on the baseline. Brummett finishes at the rim. There's, you, you mentioned it a bit ago. There's a concerted effort to look to Brummett inside. Just about every, every possession down the court, and with good reason the way he's been playing here the last couple of weeks. Western Carolina, the hottest team in the league coming in. Seven of their last eight games. Fletcher McGee, the hottest shooter in the league coming in. How about this? 65% of his threes the last eight games. And that's just an incredible statistic at any level. Simply can't let him have his feet in space like he did right there. He'll knock it down at a very high percentage. It's not just six out of 10 we're talking here. He's taken 60 of them over that span. Foul on Pegram will put Brummett at the line. There's everything right about McGee and his shot, his mechanics. You watch the elevation right here, the kick from Garcia. He's got his feet, he steps into it. High follow through with a guide hand, release at the right time. I mean, future very bright for this young man. I and mean, you could throw him into you know, the category of you know, a J.J. Redick and other freshmen. I mean, he's had arguably as good a freshman year as a perimeter shooter as any in recent memory in college basketball. He's the freshman of the year here in the Southern Conference. Senior Spencer Collins back onto the floor. He was a freshman of the year in a, in a year where there was some really good first-year players. Hard not to vote for him, though. Leads the nation in free throws. Stick with us at the half. We'll talk more about that. We'll unveil the Dean's List. My partner puts together his own awards for the Southern Conference. That'll be part of what goes on here at the half. Now it's McGee, an off-balance shot. Gets it off so quick, and he can square his shoulders even when he's initially off balance on the catch. Again, right into Brummett. Help took a while to come, but Brummett unable to score. Brown goes in on the freshman, McGee, ties the game. That's not an easy shot. I mean, McGee was moving his feet. They were shoulder to shoulder. Here's McGee now, really starting to feel it. Getting aggressive as Brummett tries to win the battle and does, he scoops it back into Browning. Browning taking it all the way up the floor before giving it off to Harrelson, falling out of bounds. It's Mike Brown for three. 12 quick points for Brown. He is the guy, he is, hey, he's the leader in minutes played in the Southern Conference. He's an Iron Man of sort and with good reason. I mean, double figures in all but four games this year for the Catamounts. McGee, his man went flying out at him. He misses at the rim. Mike Brown was all the way down the floor. Brummett didn't see him down there. Brown can get hot. So can Harrelson. I mean, he's a guy that's been quiet so far. Skip pass from Brown to the freshman Goslin. Now Brown. Well, he's not that hot. <laughs> Kind of a heat check shot of sorts. It's pretty good up until that point. It's a six nothing run right now for Mike Brown and the Catamounts. They've got the lead with less than four to go in the half. 